Well, I know this isn't the most ideal background you probably had after Alabama's SEC championship victory, but here we are. The court has already been disassembled, um, so we are having to film this uh, famous central court side, not really court side at all, rather inside, deep inside Bridgestone <laughs> Arena <laughs> uh, for BamaCentral.com. I'm Joey Blackwell here with Blake Byler and Austin Hannon. Following Alabama's 82 to 63 win over four, over let's see what seed were they two, two seed, seed yep. Texas A&M sorry it's been a long week guys <laughs> um, well, uh, over two seed Texas A&M guys a lot of takeaways from this game we do know that Alabama is also the number one overall seed we waited around to see how that would happen Alabama will be playing in Thursday in Birmingham uh, to open up the tournament um, but we'll start about to, we'll start with today's game uh, with you Blake what were some of your takeaways from today's game and then just taking it all in, and I know we both were there um, back in 2021 when Bama won, but that was a completely different set of circumstances COVID back then. Yeah, well, takeaways from the game itself would be just how Alabama played elite defense once again uh, against one of the better offenses in the SEC. After the game, Nate Oates talked about how Alabama um, really keyed in on Wade Taylor, uh, Texas A&M's best player. He had 28 when they played the teams played a week ago. Yeah. Today, he only had 13 on three of 11 shootings, so really inefficient performance from him. Uh, Nate Oates talked about how Alabama has done really well on star players this tournament, uh, from Kobe Brown having just six points from Missouri yesterday to Wade Taylor's disappointing game today, uh, and also just Charles Bediaco's rim protection once again was huge for Alabama. Uh, when Alabama was able to run shooters off the line, get people uh, to force those inside shots, Bediaco came up with five blocks once again today. So just the way he's anchored this defense has been huge for this tournament run and will be big as they move into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and Alabama had a, like like. Blake just said, had some great big performances from Brandon Miller and Javon Quinter and Charles Bediaco, as Nate said, might have played the best game <laughs> of his time at Alabama today. All three of them making the, uh, well, at least two of them making the all-tournament team, actually. No, all, all, three three. Of them did, all, three. all three of them did what normally would have been two. Ironically enough, Javon Quinter was, was a sixth man, so that was fitting. And let's talk <laughs> yeah, about that. that. Uh, let's talk about that, Austin. You know, you have Brandon Miller, Javon Quinter, Charles Bediaco. All three had fantastic tournaments. Um, what do you see from the? What have you seen from these guys this week, and how do you feel like they're going to impact the team moving forward as we start to see double turn? Yeah, I think coming into Nashville, there were a lot of questions about kind of the other guys. I mean, obviously, yeah. you knew what you you always know what you're going to get from Brandon Miller. Yeah. Um, but down the stretch, it felt like the offensive struggles were because it was just him, and it was yeah. like, what up? What else after that? Um, and I think even today with like Rylan Griffin, yeah, I know you didn't mention him, but he had nine he's points been, today. Yeah. He has been just totally frustrated. You, you've seen the body language. Yeah. Nine points. He had a couple big baskets at the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Quinterly just—it's March, as he said in that yeah. video. I mean, yeah. it, this is this is what he lives for. Um, he's getting his fourth ring, courtesy of the SEC. Yeah. Count both the regular season and tournament titles. Yeah. Charles Bediaco. Nato said today was the best game of his Alabama career. I agree. Um, what a weekend for him in Nashville. I mean, he came in here and there were a lot of eyes in this tournament, and they're going to, there's going to be a lot of eyes on Charles Bediaco moving forward after this tournament. So, um, yeah, Brandon Miller obviously is Brandon Miller, but getting guys like Javon Quinterly, who's starting now, and I believe will continue to start, and Charles Bediaco, who's been the starter all year, you know, getting guys like that, getting guys off the bench um, to, to contribute as they did this weekend kind of – it, it, it was a full circle for this team. It feels like they're starting to kind of redo another peak like they did in, in earlier on in the season in January. Well, as uh, as we said earlier, Alabama will be opening up its NCAA tournament this Thursday in Birmingham. I believe the time is CBD right now. It is. Um, and so we don't know the time yet. We don't even know the opponent yet because <laughs> they'll be playing. Right. Uh, two teams will be playing against each other. Uh, Blake, who are those teams against? Uh, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and Southeast Missouri. All right. Yep. We heard it here. Probably not first, but you heard it from Blake. Uh, we <laughs> promise that when we record in Birmingham, we'll have a much better background and probably a much better audio situation. But for now... Wrapping it up from Nashville, I am Joey Blackwell with Blake Byler and Austin Hannon. This has been Bama Central Portside. Thank you guys so much for watching.